Hey everyone, it's Synth Designer back again with another Sound Design Basics video. Today I wanted to talk about the importance of distortion, how to apply it to your sounds, and kind of the effect it has on the harmonic spectrum. So we're not going to get into all the details of all the types of distortions there are and every thing behind the musical theory of distortion, I wanted to kind of give you some practical examples and then show you how you can use them in your own sound design and in your own music. This is not going to be a complete exhaustive study of distortion, but I did want to kind of start you off if you're new to the sound design game and kind of give you an idea how it works. So before we get started, if you're new here, please head over to synthdesigner.com. I have tons of presets for Serum and Vital. And if you want to get even more presets, you could head over to my Patreon page. And just for $2 a month, I send out about 10 to 15 Serum presets of all sorts, including Synthwave, Chill, and kind of lo-fi sounds, 90s dance sounds, and even into kind of 2010s and modern types of sounds. Sometimes I just come up with stuff and I send them out at the start of each month. Lastly, please remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see anything specific in the future. So let's get right into this. So right now we have a basic sine wave here. I'm using Serum here, but it's this is not about the synth itself. You could use any synth. Pretty much every synth will have some sort of distortion uh, effect to it. Now this one I think Serum has some decent distortions, and let me be clear here, when I say distortion, it could be used in a variety of different ways. So you'll see kind of people talking about saturation, distortion, overdrive. All of those things have their own characteristic, but they're similar in what people usually mean by them. Don't get fooled into thinking that saturation or overdrive or tube distortion are completely unique things that have nothing to do with each other. They are, you know, unique in certain ways, but they are basically the same thing. What you're adding to a sound is harmonic content. And here's what I mean by that. If you haven't seen my kind of basic wavetable breakdown, head over to my YouTube page and make sure to look up Sound Design Basics and then you'll see kind of breakdowns of the saw, the sine, triangle, square, and you'll see how they function. This is particularly important for the harmonic content that they each have. So as I mentioned in that previous video, a sine wave has one basic fundamental frequency, nothing else. A saw wave, on the other hand, I'm going to turn this down, has tons of harmonic content as you see. But what happens if you have a sine wave and you want to introduce distortion to that? So let's turn on distortion. And all of a sudden you have all this harmonic content. Now what does that mean? The note still stays the same. So what we hear is still B here, but we're also hearing all these other notes coming up underneath them. So we're still hearing a B, but we're hearing all these other notes as well. So like this F sharp, this D sharp, and so on. And the importance of that is when people talk about adding distortion or saturation, they want to add that harmonic content to it. That provides richness to the sound. Otherwise, we just have this basic sound, and this can apply to any sound at all. I'm not only saying that you should add distortion to a sine wave to kind of improve its sound or to add harmonic content, this could be added to any type of thing, right? So let's just put a little filter on here. You can see it here. And then if we add distortion, you're seeing more and more of that harmonic content come up. So, we have kind of a basic understanding now that it, it provides harmonic content and kind of interest to the sound. So how do we use it? That's the most important thing, right? When you're a beginner, you should think about just the basics of how you use it. Let's take a look at a couple examples. In this example, I just want to show you a basic saw wave 
and then a couple different distortions and see how they affect things. Let's start off with this down sample here. As you can see, it's a very harsh distortion and you'll come across some of these really harsh distortions. Down sample is one example. The sine fold is another example. The point of these is sometimes they're going to be a lot more subtle, like the tube. Just adding that subtle frequencies. Other times, tape saturation. They're all going to have their little character, but check out the ones that are a little bit more subtle at the beginning. So something like tape saturation, tube, soft clip, and you'll see these types of saturations all over the place. Other times, experiment with other uh, types. You'll find them a little bit more in your face and harsh, and that's great for stuff like dubstep, for example, different types of trap music. These types of distortions have their own place, but you have to be a little bit careful with them and just experiment with them. So I have this nice pad here. Let's just see what happens when we introduce distortion to it. Let's hear it first. Kind of the synth wavy type of pad. Nice, rich content to it, right? Let's hear what happens when we start adding distortion to it. When we're this high in the mix and we're playing this many notes, the unfortunate thing with pads is oftentimes when we add too much distortion, it starts really distorting. I know that's pretty shocking to hear, but essentially when you play a note, it adds distortion. And when you add, and you add notes, it's adding more of that distortion every note you play. So see the difference between one note here and then all those notes played at once. And there are situations where this might work, but in pads in particular, you have to be careful about adding distortion. Maybe you want a little bit of that richness on the upper end, but be careful. This is just an example to show you. You don't want to be adding distortion at every single stage or in every single part of your sound design. Particularly when it comes to pads, you have to think about how it's used. And usually with pads, you're going to be playing them with multiple notes at once and distortion is essentially adding up every single time you add a note. Conversely here, we have a different pad that actually is gonna act a little bit differently. So I have this pre-setting here, and this essentially allows me to filter the sound while using the distortion. So with it off, sorry, with the entire distortion off, we have this rich kind of pad sound. Now, if I to turn it on, there's distortion, but it's also filtered. So in this case, even though it's a pad sound, the drive is a little bit lower and I'm able to filter it as well. So the tape saturation here, which is often used in kind of emulating more of that old school kind of analog sound, this is adding to it without adding all that extra harshness that you would hear in that last example that we heard. And that's to do with both the filter and the type of distortion you get and just the drive amount. So you can think about that as well. So here we have a lead that I downloaded off a of splice and let's listen to just how this one works. So without the distortion on, here's what we have. Pretty interesting kind of lead sound, really modern. Now let's turn the distortion on. As you can hear, we have more distortion as, as I play it louder. So as you can see, every time I hit, this kind of comes up and that's because this is attached to the envelope. The main thing I want to talk about here though is 
It's adding that content, that rich content without it being an issue. This is more of a lead sound, so you can play it as chords, but generally any leads, you'll just think about playing one note, right? Maybe two. And in this case, this hard clip here, it has a little bit of an edge, but not too much, right? And that's what's giving that nice, rich kind of content, that harmonic content. Now in this last example, we're gonna talk about basses. And in basses, this is a huge way to use distortion and to introduce some interesting sounds to your basses, essentially. So when you add that harmonic content, you're adding frequency information, right? Generally, basses are gonna be in the lower frequency. However, sometimes the way to make your basses pop through a mix is to add harmonic content. So sometimes you'll hear producers adding that distortion to the bass, not necessarily because they want to make it super gritty, but because they want it to add to the actual mix. Without adding that harmonic content, you wouldn't be able to hear the bass quite as well because it wouldn't have any upper frequencies. Or sometimes, in some cases, it would have less frequency information. As we saw with that sine wave at the very beginning, the sine wave has only that fundamental frequency. When we want to add that higher, those higher frequencies, we need to add that distortion to kind of give it that element. So what we're doing here is roughly the same thing. Now this one already has some information. But let's just turn this on. And as you can hear, it's definitely adding a little bit of pop. It's definitely adding a little bit more upper information and just a little bit of that grit. And that's just enough to help us get that information and get that bass coming through the mix a little bit better. So hopefully you get some idea on the essence of distortion in your sound design. I showed you a few examples here. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see more, if you want me to talk about something else in distortion, or if you just want some clarification. The general idea behind distortion is it adds harmonic content. You have to be careful how you use it. Sometimes it can be a lot and really take away from the sound. Other times you might not even need it at all because it just doesn't add much to it. So hopefully you like this video and I'll see you next time.